The pandemic has introduced us all to the importance of antibodies, our resistance to infection normally produced after we've had a viral infection. COVID vaccines, of course, stimulate the development of antibodies without us getting gravely ill. And as we know, they're saving lives. But there is another important reason to get the jab, T cells. And to tell us more, I'm joined by research director at the University of the Western Cape, Professor Bertram Fielding, who, along with PhD student Diawald Skuman, has co authored fascinating research and an article for the conversation about this. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. So, what are T cells and how are they different to antibodies? So Sally, first, um, this is a popular press article, and it's based on a review that we, that we published uh, last month, and it is really looking at um, work from all over the world, and then, you know, making sense of it. So there's a very important difference between antibodies and T cells. Um, once you become infected with the virus, for instance, your body's immune system is, is activated, and the first thing that is produced are the antibodies. Now, the antibodies in this case, um, would prevent the virus from entering the cell. Once the virus gets into the cell, the, the white blood cells, and in this case, T cells, um, would be activated, and the T cell would almost engulf and eat um, infected cells. Um, so, and, and, and T cells are, are very much involved with long-term immunity, much longer than what antibodies last. So that's a very important distinction between the two. Very interesting. So basically antibodies go for the virus, uh, but the T cells kill the cells that have already been infected with the virus. Okay. Uh, you exactly. Write, exactly. Uh, you write that both are absolutely crucial, um, but T cells almost more important in the long term when it comes to specifically fighting coronaviruses. Tell us more. So, uh, for some reason, researchers are not looking at, and it's called cell-mediated immunity, because it's T and B cells. In this case, we're discussing T cells. Um, for instance, if you look at a, a single case study from Singapore, a person was infected in 2003 with SARS, human coronavirus, the one that killed 10% uh, worldwide of people infected. And this person, when tested, had T cells 11 years later. So that person would very likely still be immune. So um, as I've mentioned, T cells have something to do with longer term immunity. And the only pharmaceutical company that has it said anything about T cells at the moment is Johnson & Johnson. And in their case, they've said for them, and they're still continuing with those studies, uh, they've seen T cells up to eight months later. So, so that's very important when we're talking about antibodies start uh, level starting to drop after four to six months so you can see we, we, we're looking here hopefully um, when we speak about t cells um, years mm -hmm. of immunity but it would differ from person to person and the immune system of that particular person well i, I thought you were going to say uh, i suppose as you say we don't know because we've only had the coronavirus with us for <laughs> less than two years um, but if antibodies last you know we don't know as you say and it does depend on the individual and it depends on the vaccine uh, but some people are saying that antibodies might start to wane um, after six months uh, after a vaccine. So oh. any idea how long T cells might last? Are we talking uh, just a few months after that or is it simply impossible to say? But early signs through Johnson & Johnson that it might be quite a bit longer? Yes, um, so, so this is encouraging and we keep on forgetting that this um, SARS coronavirus too that causes COVID is the seventh um, human coronavirus that's identified. So we have six others that have been study, studied very, very extensively. So we have to look at studies on them as well. And if you take, for instance, the four circulating um, human coronaviruses, they cause the common cold. For, for a very small minority of people, T cells and antibodies last for less than a year, so they can be infected by the same virus up to four times a year. But there's a very, very large proportion of people where their antibodies disappear, but T cells last for years and years. And here we're talking five to 10 years, and those people are not infected. So if, if COVID, SARS-CoV-2, the virus, behaves in the same way, hopefully we will see the same type of, of behavior. 
All right, so let me understand this correctly. Uh, are you saying that there's, there's positive signs based on the history of what happens with our T cells after vaccination and coronaviruses, that even after the antibodies have depleted, the T cells on their own might keep us safe from infection? And to add to that, there would be B cells as well, which are memory cells. So when they see the virus, they would be pro producing um, new antibodies. So you, you have this dual long-term um, protective mechanism. And finally, the interesting thing is that we will see the same in people who were infected and who became naturally um, uh, healthy again. So natural infections and then recovered. We expect to see exactly the same in those individuals. Right. So, so it's not all doom and it's not all doom and gloom. Um, as Which much is very good to hear. Say. It's very good to hear because we keep hearing about variant C12 that's not of concern, that's not of, but we're keeping a close eye on it. And of course, we all got used to this particular uh, roundabout where uh, suddenly we're hit with a concerning uh, message about a very worrying new variant. So how well do T cells cope with uh, new variants? So it appears this though from, from the studies that we've looked at and previous studies that they would be able to, to work against variants. But once again, it depends on how different the variant is, because remember these variants originate from mutations in the spike protein. Um, so it, those studies almost have to provide results as people become infected. Um, if you look at the newer studies from Oxford, um, Italy, Israel, they're now saying that even those vaccinated they can have very high levels of delta in their body, equal to um, those who were previous, who, were, who are unvaccinated. And yet, when those people become ill, um, the symptoms are much, much less severe. So these, virus, these vaccines, um, they are working. And I think they, they're working, yes, because of the antibodies, but of, mm. these, of the cell-mediated response as well, especially the T cells. So, so with this, uh, this T cell information, uh, and as you said, we need to see over time, but history seems, quite, uh, seems to suggest that we might have a lot of immunity through the T cells. Doesn't that suggest that we might not need as many boosters as we've been worrying about? You know, and, and that's unfortunately um, not a clear answer to that question. If you look at the four circulating coronaviruses um, and you look at the population in general, a small percentage are, can be infected multiple times, which means everything disappeared, uh, T cells and antibodies. And then there is a very large percentage that have long term immunity. Um, so they would then not be infected between ages three and 15 again. So it's really difficult to tell if, if SARS-CoV-2 would behave the same way and whether the T cells stimulated by these vaccines or the infections would indeed um, behave the same way. But very importantly, we have to remember and, and remind our viewers that T cells in my body um, could last for years and years. And in somebody just because of a glitch in the immune system, uh, could wane within a year. So we must be very careful how we interpret scientific data. Absolutely. But still, nonetheless, uh, uh, very good to know about the fact that antibodies are not on their own uh, in trying to help us combat uh, COVID-19. The T cells are also hard at work, killing the cells that have already been infected while the antibodies attack the virus. Absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much, Professor Bertram Fielding, Research Director at the University of the Western Cape.